Good afternoon, folks. Big Bo here with another great fifth wheel value from Parkway RV Center. Got a nice luxury model we're going to show today. And it's not too big, it's not too small. This is a 2015 Cedar Creek Silverback Edition by Forest River. Very, very nice uh, Four Seasons fifth wheel. It has three slides, weighs 10,800 pounds. And it's only 33 feet 11 inches long so it's designed more or less for those of you who don't want to drive a, a one-ton dually pickup truck that wants something you can tow pretty easily with with most three-quarter ton trucks of course always check your vehicle's towing capacity before buying a any type of towable camper or or fifth wheel but guys it's a beautiful full body paint let's look around it um three slides R38 at Four Seasons insulation. Got the 10 gallon water heater, got the slide toppers. Well on one slide, your other two slides, you don't need them. They've got a very cool looking, like an A-frame style. That way the water runs off the sides and the limbs and debris on theory is supposed to run down it too. So you don't have to worry about having a slide topper. Even though the main reason of a slide topper is to keep leaves and, and sticks from damaging your slide out seal, bringing your room in or out. Actually, te they help with water, but they're technically not designed to help with water. That's why you have seals on your slide out rooms. It does have the six point level up system, hydraulic. So that's several thousand dollar upgrade when you bought it new. I love the... Uh, the decals on these guys, the big bears and the silverback bear, grizzly and all that. Double axle, of course, like I said, it's designed to be towed with, you know, a three quarter ton pickup truck. Normally as a rule of thumb, three axles, you need six wheels to tow it. But I like the frameless windows, that's less maintenance involved. Uh, it does have the crowned roof with the TPO top. Of course, got your rear bumpers slash sewer hose holder. Of course, I'm not gonna be able to squeeze through here, but the main thing I'm showing on the outside is not faded for a, you know, for a almost seven year old fifth wheel. It's actually in very, very good condition. Um, like it came out of Georgia. 50 amp electrical service, which I'm plugged into now. Furnace, this unit does have the optional second AC and you can bet I've got both of those things running on high. I like the fiberglass cap on the front. Paint's not faded anywhere on it. I don't have it on, but it looks like it's got a little LED light right here. Another grizzly bear. Power awning. Outside speakers. A nice, well-insulated fifth wheel for, for those of you who don't want to haul or stay in a 40, 40 plus foot behemoth. You know, this is a mid-sized fifth wheel, so not too big, not too small. Let's look inside. Oh man, look how nice this is right here. I got a little bit of a flickering problem with the lights, guys. I'm, I'm hooked into a lot of extension cords. And um, it's either that or uh, it's got a converter problem, which we'll fix either way. More than likely, though, when they've done this in the past, it's because uh, I'm, on, I'm on the furthest part of the lot from the plug-in. So I probably got too many cords on this thing to be running this much amperage to it. You know, a lot of people don't realize it, but the more extension cords or the longer extension cords, you put uh, on a camper, even with the proper amperage one, this is all 50 amp, it drops the amperage for every foot of uh, extension cord you're hooked into. But you've got beautiful leather furniture, table and chairs. I found one light that doesn't work and it's just because the bulbs burn out. No big deal. Solid surface Corian countertops, books, manuals, solid hardwood cabinetry. This middle kitchen looks great. It's got an island. Lots of storage. I love the rear den with the fireplace. A good spot to your TV. Got a Jensen audio system. 
Um, you can see that crowned roof and you can see your main slides also got that A-frame roof on it. Leather recliners and it's got a couple of spots on the recliners. Nothing worth replacing or recovering these recliners for. Now, if you want to buy a couple of extra chairs or have these recovered, that's up to you. I'm not planning on doing that for a spot not much bigger than my thumb. That's uh, certainly not worth recovering or fixing. Somebody probably had something on their hair, some chemicals or uh, perm, perm, who knows? You don't ever know with these things. Got the nice glass front cabinets. Fireplace is set for the effect or you can set it for an auxiliary uh, 5100 BTU electric heater. Roof air is nice and cold in here. It's been on about an hour or so. I mean, we're blowing 40s. I like that vent. See right there, I help distribute that air too. And I've got the cool jet on. I don't have the vents on. Just trying to cool this main area off quickly. Oh, this is miserably hot in these fifth wheels, guys, when it's 90 plus degrees outside. I love all the storage in this middle kitchen, guys. You know, a lot of food prep area, a lot of storage. Um, three burner stove top. Uh, uh, looks like it's been cooked on. Over the range microwave. Refrigerator, which probably hasn't gotten cold yet, but actually, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Fridge, I'm sure, is not cold yet, but yeah, 19 degrees in the freezer. That's actually pulling off, uh, cooling off very quick. Uh, refrigerator, I'm sure, has not been cooled off. It's still in the 70s. But like I said, guys, 99% of the time, if this works, this works. It, the cold has to trickle from this down to this. Takes about several hours. To, takes about eight hours for a refrigerator to get to operating temp once you turn it on. And uh, fortunately, I can't, I don't have time to wait eight hours for these things to cool off. But like I said, 99% of the time, uh, the freezer works, the fridge works. I know every once in a blue moon you hear about one that doesn't, that's because the people didn't leave it on long enough. Or there might be a blockage in the cooling unit where people have been running it a long period of time while the camper wasn't level. All you have to do is do what we call burp the fridge. I've done it myself. Remove the fridge, set it on its side for 24 hours, set it upside down for 24 hours, set it right side up for 24 hours and install it and it'll work just like a new one. And that's because somebody got a, a blockage or an air bubble caught in the sealed ammonia line somehow from running it unlevel. And uh, that's an old RVers trick right there, guy, old RV text trick. I learned many years ago. Matter of fact, my last RV, my Winnebago, the one I had before my current one, when I first got it many, many years ago, I had to do it to that one. And it never failed me for the seven or eight, nine years that I owned it afterwards. So, in here, guys, uh, nice bathroom area. Got the vinyl flooring in here, got the Corian countertop. Big shower. Skylight, no signs of water damage. There's no smoke or pad odor. It's got a China RV toilet. This time last year, that's bit, that would have been about $10 worth of toilet paper. We're gonna walk toward the front where you got a king size bed, a second AC unit. Um, little cutty place right here. Fire extinguisher, hope you never need that. A couple of hooks for hanging stuff. I like the A-frame, just gives it a nice little uh, home-like feel. Chest of drawers, foot of the bed. Yeah, I think that's the uh, cords because the compressor just kicked on on this one and the light started blinkering more. So right there tells me that's more likely because I got too many extension cords on this. Huge closet, guys. Look at the size of this closet. You can literally, I'm six foot four, 300 pounds. I mean, I can literally step in here and close the door and it does have washer and dryer hookups. Now guys, I don't know how big of a closet you want. 
in fact I could turn the light on I guess if I could find it but I don't know how big of a and plug-ins up here too at the shoe rack I don't know how big of a closet you want you can just about put you a air mattress in there and sleep somebody if you wanted to that is a big closet um of course mirror front this is a nice fifth wheel guys very well insulated very cool in here because like i said it's 90 something degrees outside and oh yeah mid 70s in here i'll take that all day every day i don't know about y'all but i do not do good in heat and i've been born and raised in this kind of weather and i still have a hard time with it But guys, this is an Extreme Four Seasons model. It's been zero degree tested for 24 hours with the factory heating system only. And I'm sure the fireplace as well. And it maintained an average temperature of 72 degrees after being in a controlled zero degree environment for 24 hours. So why well, I'm telling you that in case you want something to live in and you don't want to freeze to death in the winter time or roast to death in the summer, this is a great choice. I mean, honestly, two ACs and a fifth wheel this size just does a fantastic job. And a little trick, guys, you know, if your RV after about six hours, if your air conditioners, and, and I've had people ask me, hey, my air didn't work good on this or that, talking about other units. I'll tell you a trick, guys, you have to go up to the roof, and, and usually you can do it yourself, save some money if you're able to. But you've got two sets of coils up there that you can clean every single year. Condenser coils and evaporator coils. One on the back of the AC, one on the front. Pop that cover off. Uh, you can buy the rinseless coil cleaner. Just remember whatever you spray in there, you're going to inhale inside your camper. So you try to get something not so toxic. Um, and of course you can carry a bottle, a, a spray bottle full of water if you want to rinse it off. Clean those coils once every year and if you're living in it you probably want to do it two times a year maybe three um and those airs will, will, will work fantastically you should the, be able to cool from the ambient outside temperature you should be able to drop 25 degrees inside your coach after about six hours of running if you don't you've either got a problem with your air conditioner or you've got inadequate uh, ventilation or inadequate cooling power to cool your rv off but most of the time, guys, people never service those coils, never clean those ACs. You gotta clean those filters all the time, guys. You know, the, it's like anything else in life. The better you take care of it, the better service it'll give you. And, um, you know, you wanna clean, uh, once a month, you wanna wash those filters or replace them. Um, especially if you're living in it. Just like you would in your own home, guys. You don't, you change your air conditioner filters at home every month. If you're living in an RV or staying in it uh, full time, you need to do the same thing. Um, anyway, guys, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube about how to clean the coils and all that stuff. I've done it myself. It's it's really no big deal. It doesn't take 20 minutes per air once you're up there. So, um, but this one obviously has been maintained because it's doing a fantastic job cooling this off. Um, anyway, guys, this is a nice unit clean um 37 9 while it lasts includes a world famous four page inspection process as long as you understand going into it that we're suffering from the worst part shortage and labor shortage that we've seen in 53 years in business right now and it happens to coincide during a time when rv business is double what it normally is this time of year at least what it was before the pandemic so not a good time if, if you're in a hurry if you want a fully checked out rv and it's not just us it's everybody guys uh thor of course biggest rv manufacturer in the world's got a 14 billion dollar backlog of rvs so right now if you want a new thor product depends on the make and model you may have up to a 12 month plus waiting period once you order it before they get it because they got 12 14 plus billion dollars and backlog that's units that dealers have already ordered for stock and for other customers before they can even touch yours so um keep that in mind 
that puts that much more pressure on used because people that would normally buy only new have got no choice to buy used and that's why there's such a low inventory so right now guys these things are selling fast um unfortunately i don't have the manpower to do the full four page checkout in a timely manner expect about a 30 to 45 day waiting period i'd rather tell you this up front before you call because the same thing my salespeople are going to tell you you know if you don't want to wait that long we'll uh, hook it into a generator or plug it into uh power here let you do your, let us know you're coming and of course we'll plug it into less 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 amount of cords so uh you don't have this flickering problem but um We'll let you come out, look at it, do your own inspection. You can turn everything on, let us know. We'll turn the fridge on beforehand. Like I said, it takes six to eight hours to get the operating temp. And you can do your own inspection and say, hey, you got everything on this thing works except for a light bulb. And uh, hey, what's that? I mean, you know, that's nothing. Go ahead and get you a discount. Take it home the same day you pay for it. Because right now, guys, the 37.9 with a checkout and you get a 90 day easy care nationwide limited warranty. And other benefits is 37.9 plus applicable sales tax is a haggle-free firm price. If you are willing to take it as is, like a lot of people are right now, just to be able to use it, um, we'll give you a discount, a good discount off of this RV that will pay for any repairs you may have to do, if anything at all, and still leave money in your pocket versus buying it for the 37.9 price of the full check. I'm not saying that you may not have to repair some little stuff, but that's any RV you buy. The main thing is you want to make sure the main stuff works, like the ACs, the fridge. We'll put water in it so you can check the water system out, uh, furnace, and all that good stuff. Because the little stuff, you can handle yourself, guys. It's no big deal. You know, anybody that knows they're halfway around a toolbox, knows they're way halfway around a toolbox, can fix most little stuff in an RV. It's not rocket science. But uh, the main thing you want to make sure is the big expensive parts that would cost the most money if they didn't work, work. And I can tell you right now, they do. Um, so that's what I'm saying. Let us know you're coming. We'll plug it into power, hook it into a generator, one or the other. Let you spend some time in it, do your own inspection before deciding if you want to buy it for the option A, 37.9 price. Or if you go through it, see everything works good enough for you take the discounted price, pay for it, take it home the same day instead of waiting 30 days or more for a checkout. So however you want to buy it, guys, we can accommodate you either way. And hopefully that situation will change in the next couple of months. I hope. Because right now, guys, we're operating half a crew with doing twice the business. I'm short on every department here. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm not going to get into the whole doomsday and junk that's going on in the RV industry right now let's just say it's nothing's going to change for the next couple of years or longer I hope it, I hope I'm wrong but don't count on it um, 2015 Cedar Creek Silverback 291k smallest one they built 33 feet 11 inches total length long three slides beautiful condition island kitchen four in countertops two ACs, washer and dryer hookups, fireplace, TV in the back, comfortable leather chairs and furniture, table and Guys, it's got everything you need. Crowned roof, uh, residential style, kind of an A-frame slide outs. Um, yeah, I mean, if this is the floor plan you're looking for and the price range you're looking to spend, this is a solid deal, guys. Price under NADA retail, which Right now, guys, is stuff this nice is bringing NADA retail at dealer auctions. And then a dealer's got to turn around, mark it up, and pay buy fees and transportation fees. This same RV at a different dealership be ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 more, plus fees that they'll probably charge you that we don't. Thirty-seven nine with the full inspection, the 90-day easy care nationwide limited warranty, plus applicable sales tax. That's it, guys. Easy, simple, done. 21 nights of free camping, up to seven nights at a time included, um, to be used in a 12 month period. Starter kit included, drive out tag included, 37 nine plus applicable sales tax. You know, you go to these rip, uh, these other dealers, guys, especially the corporate ones like Rip Off World and all that, 
oh at that price you have to go through our finance department well we can overcharge you by thousands of dollars by marking our interest rate up we can't sell you that for cash you got to pay three or four thousand dollars more if you pay cash for the same rv uh, also uh to buy this for the advertised price you got to buy a five-year extended warranty marked up five times dealer cost and then you got to buy uh, you got to pay two or three thousand dollars in dock fees and prep fees and happy camper fees and freight fees and all this junk that all 100 percent dealer profit and before you know it to buy it for that 37.9 price you've got to pay an additional ten or twelve thousand dollars <laughs> And they get people every single day, multiple times a day with that scheme, guys. Don't fall victim to it. Get the out-the-door price. That is what you're really paying for. If they make, if they tell you they you can't buy it for cash, you have to go through their finance department. That means they're going to rip you off, guys. And it's like the old saying goes, if you catch somebody trying to rip you off on one thing, how many things are they ripping you off on that you didn't catch? So if they're trying to get you to finance, their finance department won't even consider you going to your own bank or paying cash. Don't walk, run away from that dealership. If they try to charge you any fees besides sales tax and if you're buying in state of where you live, tag and title, don't walk, run because they're ripping you off. You catch them ripping you off or trying to rip you off guys, stay away, don't even go any further wait you'll find the same one somewhere else for less without all the bs we take trade-ins we have financing available with approved credit down payment with no dealer interest rate markup we have nationwide delivery available you just reimburse us the cost of getting this to you and just a little tip if it's within 100 miles locally one way it's free no charge <laughs> guys we've been doing this 53 years you can make things too complicated big dealers make this buying process way too complicated the reason they do that is so they can maximize product uh, profit for them big dealers don't get big by giving people fair deals they get big by maximizing profit on every single thing they do and sell a retail buyer like yourself guys we've been here 53 years one location we're not a franchise dealer we sell used we sell five six hundred units a year our prices some of the best on the internet the benefits we give you the best in the internet for a used rv we don't have you any we don't give you any surprises no fees none of that stuff guys just straightforward if i see something wrong with something when i'm videoing it i'll show it to you I don't tell you these things are new. There's no such thing as a light new used RV. That's the most misused term in RV advertising. It's either new or used. There is no such thing as light new. If it's one month old, it's been used. It's a used RV, not light new. If you come in here expect to buy a seven, six, seven year old fifth wheel that and thinking it's going to be like a 2021 model, you're you're going to be very mistaken on any 15 model fifth wheel you look at because if you look hard enough you're going to find imperfections i the ones i see i point out to you that's why i always tell you come out look at it spend some time with it get to know it before deciding to buy it or not you know one thing about being human is we all have different opinions about everything religion politics and what kind of condition uh a used rv should be in to be good enough to purchase for yourself or your family I give this thing a solid 9 out of 10. Next person looks at it and may say, hey, you know what? It's a 5 out of 10. The person after that may look at it and say, hey, this is a 12 out of 10 for me. <laughs> and nobody's right, nobody's wrong. It's just an opinion. So come out, make your own opinion about it, spend some time in it. You won't be disappointed, guys. You know, I've got more used inventory than anybody right now. I'm buying everything I can to refill it, but it's going quicker than I can fill it up. Uh, I'm probably down to about 75, 80 units right now. Hopefully I'll get some more in. I've got, I bought four or five today at, a, at an auction, but you know what guys, it's just uh, prices right now are just crazy. Um, 
honestly, this the, what I'm selling this one for, I could have took it today and sold it at the auction for that price. So needless to say, I didn't buy any fifth wheels today because they were just too crazy high. Retail's a new wholesale at, at, uh, when it comes to the RV industry now. So, you know, if it's, uh, this is, this would have brought every penny what I'm asking for it, probably then some at the auction. I would have to do a thing to it except bring the title and drop it off down there and pay a buy fee. But guys, taking stuff to the auction don't help my employees here who depend on us having units out here to sell so they have job security. And it certainly makes it hard to uh, have this much acreage of prime real estate property, uh, commercial property, with no inventory on it. So that's why I don't do that. Believe me, I could and, and make a good living doing it. But uh, that's not how we operate, guys. You know, y'all depend on us to provide you nice, clean, used RVs that we would use ourselves and that you can use to save money. Literally, guys, what these things cost new because there's been almost a 20% increase in MSRP prices in the past 12 months alone because of skyrocketing supply parts and raw material cost. And new production is at the lowest it's ever been. Stuff's not cheap right now, guys. You can literally buy this right now, pay for it for not much more than you're going to lose in depreciation on a new RV the first year you own it. So, uh, equivalent of this coach now is going to be close to 100 grand brand new. Or you can buy this one for 37.9. Do everything a new one will do for a lot less money. But anyway, guys, thank y'all for watching. Please smash me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share on social media. If you have questions, uh, best thing to do is just pick, try not to. I do ask that you try not to use our messenger service or uh, emails. You can if you want to. If you're shy to pick up and talk on the phone, I get it. But expect the delay getting back to you. Uh, it's always best to call during business hours only. 706-965-7929. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, 9 to 5 Eastern. Of course, we are closed Sunday, Lord's Day and Family Day for our employees. And we are closed most holidays. Thank you again for watching. Uh, questions, comments, email us. Uh, well, best to call us. Um, call before coming to look. Make sure it's available. Thank you again. Look forward to seeing you here in beautiful Green Gold, Georgia.